I already know what you're thinking. Why, you already have a Jeep. What's the point of a second one? Ditch that super ugly grill. Why are the tires sucked in so far? I am with you. But, it was a deal. I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And I have a hard time passing on a deal. But, it's a Rubicon, it's an actual Rubicon. Uh, 2014. Um, and my plan is to kind of set it up for more light duty wheeling, camping, as much as I sometimes don't like the word overlanding, but it has AC, has a hard top, it's quiet, uh, has a hundred more horsepower than my TJ. So it would be a good road rig and it has title issues and that's hence the deal. So if I can get a title for it, and 37s, three and a half inch lift. First things first, get the fucking junk off there. All right, working on this JK project. This is gonna be a slow project, by the way. Don't expect it to be done in the next week or so. So, pull the front bumper off. Um, all the threads on these little studs that go through there were all boogered up. Somebody used standard nuts on there and they're metric. So I'm gonna pound out those studs, try to get some new ones today so I can bolt the bumper on properly. And then I found a bunch of haggard BS wiring I'm gonna fix in there. Uh, as well as, like, there's a bunch of wiring running to the back that was, like, trailer wiring. I don't even know what it hooked into, but it wasn't. It was cut multiple places. Um, and I checked the front brakes. They're good. The rear are absolutely terrible. Like, the rotor's so thin in the rear, it's like a potato chip. So I ordered rear rotors and pads. I've seen, like, worn-out brakes quite a few times. But I've never seen a rotor this thin. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's... I think I could snap it with my fingers. As soon as I tapped it, that happened to try to get the rotor off. Holy crap. I mounted this vacuum pump down there. It was just zip tied under the frame. Uh, I'm going to bolt this winch plate in properly. Whoa. And I picked up this drive shaft from a guy off Facebook Marketplace uh, for 250 bucks. So he ordered two of them on accident, I guess, and it fits. So I'm going to throw that in and then get rid of the... There's like these exhaust spacers that you put on to uh, drop the exhaust so the driveline clears on the 12 to 18s. I'm gonna try to get rid of that, I think I can, and then it'll tuck the exhaust up a little tighter where it needs to be. But I pulled the rear seat out. I'm sure you JK guys know, but I did not. That thing is like 100 pounds. It's a hog. So, pulled that out, and that's it for now. Oh yeah, uh, I ordered a 10,000 pound Warren winch because it was on sale, you're not gonna believe this, but for $269. It's it's the cable model and it's not wireless, but for 269 bucks and probably as often as I'll have to use the winch on this thing for light duty wheeling, it's perfect. The wiring on this thing was absolutely terrible. The marker lights did not work. These side markers were wired backwards. Uh, the passenger side tail light did not work, which it works now. So we're getting there. I'm getting everything working and decannibalizing all the wiring. Finally, after freaking four hours of screwing with the wiring, all of the lights work, including the fog lights, which didn't even have wires ran to them. All right, you guys probably don't quite understand how stoked I am unless you are a person that has 
had to deal with the Washington State Patrol VIN inspection. But for that Jeep, I'm waiting on a VIN inspection. And everybody told me a year, year and a half is what it's going to take to get one. But if you check every Tuesday at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m., they open up another week of available appointments. And I just got okay, one. So this thing had the cracked oil filter housing. That there. So I'm working on replacing it. Pulled the intake off. I broke this hose, so I gotta order one of those. But uh, got the new aluminum one. I'm gonna throw that in. Hopefully that cures the big massive oil leak that's been draining down onto the trans and all over from the trans and transfer case onto the ground. It's pretty nasty. But apparently it's really common on the JKs. I did valve cover gaskets, the updated aluminum oil cooler filter housing thing, and got everything most of the way put back together, except I got some stuff left loose up here because I broke this plastic line. Bum, bum, bum. So I gotta wait till that shows up and then I'll get that in there and then I can button everything up. Oh, I did spark plugs too. That was the other thing. I couldn't remember. And then my taillight showed up today so I can put the taillights back in. Um, that one was broke. But, uh, got a new license plate light, a little nut certs or whatever were there are gone. So that's gonna get zip tied on for now until we pass uh, the state patrol inspection. And then I'll probably get just the, the block off plate or whatever and put it over here or something, I don't know. I don't like them on the corner though, hanging out. It'll get pushed in by a snow bank or something. But yeah, it's coming along. That was... We got taillights, two of them, not broken. And a license plate holder. Kinda, it's a little janky, but. Today, we are gonna do some inner fenders. Just dirt cheap, cheap metal inner fenders that are gonna go in here, cause this thing just had the factory plastic ones and they were kinda destroyed. Um, remember this thing's like total budget build, so you guys can go ahead and guess what will be into it at the end of this. Uh, but I think it's probably going to be cheaper than you think. I've done a windshield, uh, rear brakes, and then I got inner fenders, and then I did the oil cooler fix, which is a common JK problem, valve cover gaskets, spark plugs, and I'm going to do the locker mod maybe today if we get to it, to where I can turn the lockers on whenever I want, not when the ECU wants because I want to be able to run the rear locker high range and be able to whip cookies and whatnot. Obviously super important. Which is becoming super important. Yeah, I guess I ordered a winch. You'll see that coming up here soon. Uh, and that's about it so far. But take a guess what will be into it. Uh, eventually we're gonna probably do a better lift. Got the inner fender installed on this side. Looks pretty good for, I think they were like 64 bucks. So again, budget build, we're trying to stay cheap. I haven't done this side cause I gotta change out that PCV hose that goes down there over to there. But I got the locker bypass wires kind of hooked up. I'm gonna finish them later, but if, if you don't know, uh, these two relays right here, next to where the battery would sit, those control your lockers. Uh, there's two purple wires. Uh, they're a switched ground. So tap into those two purple wires and then run them to your own switches and then run those switches to a ground and then you'll be good to go if you wanna do that. There's tons of videos out there, so I'm not gonna make a video all about that, but you know, just, Google locker bypass Rubicon. Okay. And I got my locker wires ran. Uh, 
Purple is rear, pink is front. I got my ground circuit there. So that way when I flip the switch, it's gonna supply ground to whatever locker I select, when I select it, whenever I select it, no matter if it's in two wheel drive, high range, doesn't matter. And then I'll, the locker will turn on. I also have this loop connected in here and I'll connect a switch to that. And once that connection breaks, so with a switch in the off position, then all traction control will turn off. So I'll be able to select that, turn the rear locker on, whip cookies, whip, whip. no problem.